Hey guys, this is Jonathan and Andy from the New Dubai. And uh, this week we're in Aarhus, Denmark. Um, we're going to a shop called Great Coffee, something you'd probably never find if you weren't looking for it. It's in a tiny alley, and uh, but we're gonna go check it out and talk to the owner, Soren, about um, his place. Okay guys, we are inside of Great Coffee with Soren... Uh, it's a big Steel. name. Yeah, Soren Stila Markus. Soren Stila Markus. Yeah. And he is an accomplished uh, barista slash... What do you call yourself? What, what name would... <laughs> what title would you say that? I would say... An accomplished uh, what? A coffee maker. An accomplished coffee, coffee maker. Yeah, that's, a good yeah. Yeah. That's, a good, that's a good title. Yeah. Uh, he... His shop here in Aarhus is fantastic. It's actually quite spacious and beautiful. The design is really cool. Um, we're kind of in the center of Aarhus, yeah? Yeah. Kind of nearby, uh, a lot of cool stuff. But we've asked him if he could show us, uh, after he kind of introduces himself, the, how to use a siphon, how to make proper siphon coffee. Because it's a, it's a tricky, that is a tricky thing to do. Yeah. It can be tricky if you haven't, if you haven't tried it before. Yeah. The yeah. mythical brew method. Yeah. So before we start, maybe describe for us a little bit about how you even came to be in Aarhus and if you're from here, if not, if how you started your shop, like or what your credentials are, how how what you love to do. Just what's your introduce yourself. Your whole life yeah, story. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> you had to have a long. Yeah. 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 But actually, it, it all my career started 12 years ago. As a barista, and uh, I was in the middle of doing a, a, a section of economic uh, masters, oh. and I needed to have a, a job, uh, <laughs> you know, a, a spare job. Yeah. So I went into a coffee bar and asked them, uh, "Hey, I don't know how to do coffee. I don't know how to even serve a coke. Can I, can I have a trial?" Yeah. So oh. they actually uh, took me in, and after half a year, I was asked to do a, a championship. Yeah. Uh, to participate in the championship. And by that time, I didn't know anything about coffee at all. <laughs> and so I also got uh, out of 12, the last one. Uh, my expressions still were running like, like that. I didn't know anything about coffee. <laughs> and I just saw these guys giving me feedback about coffee. Yeah. No one has never done that before. And they, 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 they described it so professionally. In one way, I thought, wow, yeah. that's amazing. Uh, how do you make coffee? So, actually, the, the turning point for me was when I came back to the cafe. Uh, the customer basically starts with, "Hey, we heard that you have participated in this coffee championship." Yeah. I said, yeah. Uh, now you have to make my coffee. <laughs> Not this guy, but you. Uh, I'm not using. I thought, wow, that's amazing. And I don't know anything about coffee, but does it take that little yeah. to convince people to, yeah. to make good coffee? Yeah. So I actually moved to Copenhagen uh, after half a year worked among some of the best baristas in the world. Wow. But the problem for me was that I came with a background as a pastry chef and a confectionerist. <laughs> and I used to teach at the uh, technical college. Okay. And when I asked questions, no one could answer <laughs> these questions to me. Because I asked questions that no one ever had, done before. had asked before. <laughs> yeah. So I kind of went, why is it that? Why is there so many specs? And why, blah, blah, yeah. why, why, why? So, um, in 2007, I became the second in the world, back in Latte Art. Oh, wow. Um, and I used some of my experience from the uh, early days as a yeah. pastry chef, uh, making uh, patterns and yeah. foam. That's awesome. And then after that, in 2008, I won the Danish Championship, became number six in the world, wow. and was still with our team winning the European Championship wow. also. Cool. Um, and then I decided, because the coffee itself was so volatile, yeah. so I thought I want to do something about the roasting as well. So I put myself a goal that if I ever came in the final at World Barista Championship again, I want to roast more coffee. For, no, the, for that yeah, no, competition? No, I've never done it that huh. well. So I was so lucky in 2010, I won the Danish Championship again. So I roasted more coffee. Wow. Uh, and then just to show that uh, I was serious about what I did, 
I also roasted the, the farmer's wife, her coffee in Honduras. Oh, and she gosh. won the championship in Honduras. Wow. And she also placed number 10 wow. in with my coffee. And I was placed number 5 at the same uh, championship. Wow. Wow. So just paying the respect to the farm, yeah. uh, I thought that was such a brilliant idea. Yeah. Which was unheard of back then. Yeah, <laughs> and, and no one at that time had ever roasted their own coffee as wow. a barista. Huh. Because I wanted to break that uh, you know, interface between yeah, yeah. the roaster and the barista not talking together. Right. So I always had a dream that everything should be transparent from the cup right. and to the seat. Yeah. And it sounds, you know, like uh, a lot of people have heard that story before in the, the cooking business. Yeah, but farm that, table. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I just wanted to make something which was uh, to have a not a you know like a, not like you know like a transparent form of making coffee, but something where as a barista you knew that you have had your hands picking the berries oh, okay. right, with right. the right you sugar content. Yeah. yeah. So that when you explain this is why the coffee tastes like that, you know you know why. <laughs> so you know why. Yeah. yeah. So all these questions which I didn't have uh, answered before, I want to deeper into right. it without being an expert in having my hands in the soil right. but just knowing that when you pick the berry this is a sweet berry so the cup also has to be sweet right. and this is a more uh, fruity berry mm. so the cup also has to be fruity and mm. it's my role as a grocer to interact in these uh, processes right. to make that happen bring yeah. the natural flavors out exactly yeah. Yeah. yeah that's awesome yeah that makes sense Wow. So usually yeah. I also try to make a different brewing techniques. I yeah. also to show people that wow, this is giving it more body. This is giving a little bit less body, and this is giving a, a more distinct yeah. uh, soundness or yeah. fruitiness. Right. So I always try to emphasize that try this at home. If you can't do it like that, then you have to do it like that. So yeah. Why does it give that certain flavor that yeah. you're looking for? Yeah. Awesome. Well, the siphon is kind of an intimidating tool to some people. We have one that uh, we've experimented with, but we, we've never really been pleased with what we've come up with. And so I'm really excited that we get to sit here with you today and have you even describe, teach us how to use yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I just want to do something that, that's really nice. Just doing it like this. Yeah. That, wow. <laughs> <laughs> and just what, what a fancy one, Yeah. Okay. But anyhow, uh, it's, I use a uh, Hello Team just to control the temperature on the right. time, which is important and essential when you make a coffee. Yeah. So I make three different kinds of brew. Uh, one where I have a, I will explain it on, on, yeah. on, the, on the ground, but uh, I'm just going to put it in some water. Yeah, that's yeah. great. Yeah. That's great. If you're watching this at home with us, uh, he said he's using halogen to heat this. Now a lot of the siphons, like the one we have, uses like a little Bunsen burner. Um, which can be very uncontrollable. Yeah, that's uncontrollable. Yeah. 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 This, this halogen is going to give us an incredible amount of accuracy yeah. compared to <laughs> what we would be trying to do at home. It's awesome. awesome. So show us, show us someone how to do this effectively. Uh, what I like to do is I make a three different to demonstrate a coffee with the body. Uh, this body and this body again. So what happens is that uh, I have I will use a preheated water uh -huh. and then I will add on the, the three different uh, ways of brewing. Right. So what we need is uh, we need this uh, this filter in between to not get all the grounds in the, the coffee. Okay. So what I will do is that. Uh, you can see you really need to tighten this on the hip so when the water passes up you have filter to so I keep this in the, in the water so it doesn't dry out because if it dries out and the, this uh, filter this is uh, made of cotton they actually uh, got to be moldy okay yeah. so you want and secondly And what beans are we using today? Uh, we're using the Costa Rican from Young. 
is from the terrestrial area and it's uh, washed coffee. Yeah. Uh, so it has a nice sweetness uh, to the cup, uh, like caramel and uh, cane sugar, oh, okay. and then a little bit of uh, uh, lemon. Oh, uh, awesome. yeah. Roasted here by you. Of course. Of course. Yeah. Everyone. <laughs> With Emma. That's my roast. That's <laughs> <laughs> great. So as you can see, I'm start out. I'll, I'll show you why afterwards. Yeah. Uh, can you scale one more thing? Yeah. yeah. So if you, if you haven't noticed, he's put the grounds in one before he's even began to boil the water. Yeah. And that's the other two. The good thing is that you need this on top, so you actually uh, prevent the heat to okay. go over the past room. So, you're gonna, so I'm just going to start with this one now. And then you need to scale one more. Mm -hmm. Oh no. That's why it's the coolest right there. So as you can see, uh, with this nice picture, mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. uh, first one you have the coffee in, second one I wait to put the coffee in until some of the water passes up, and the third one I'm going to wait until all the water has passed up. Mm -hmm. uh, but similar to all these three is that I wait to put the other bowl in when mm -hmm. it's 91.5 degrees. 91.5? Yeah. If the water is too hot, then the water will pass too fast up. Right. If it's too uh, too low, the temperature then will take too long time for the water to pass up, right. which means fuel is trapped is trapped longer on the corner yeah. and okay. I, I like, like it to be. And you can just play with this uh, at home. Yeah. What temperature uh, the water has to be when it passes up. So higher temperature, faster brew. Right. Lower temperature, uh, longer brew. Okay. Yeah, that's what I was having a hard time with with the uh, burner. Was <laughs> yeah. figuring out how hot it was. And it's Celsius, right? It used Celsius yeah. for all you Celsius. Americans. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So what, what we just do now is we wait until the temperature. And if you are, of course, on the smart side, you, can <laughs> <laughs> you are now 30 degrees and you. <laughs> 32. 32. Right. I'm wearing my sweater. Yeah, you're sitting in the spot line. And you? You don't work hard enough. <laughs> yeah, you're 28 degrees. Uh, 28. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so mine is uh, 45. 45. <laughs> You've been standing behind the house and lamps too long. Yeah. So I'm starting to see some small bubbles. You said yes. you're waiting for the tiny bubbles. Yeah, so we wait until the bubbles, they have a, they're standing one row. So as you okay. can see now, there's no nothing happening. So what you can actually do is this: you can just stir the water mm -hmm. so that it gets a more even heat. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the water. Oh, yeah. That's great. So of course, as you can see now, the water is starting to to be like that. Yeah. So that's an indication of in, in a few seconds we have to take a, the other bowl up. And this is actually 90 degrees now. Or you're only a degree and a half from where you want yeah. it to be. So you see now, it's more consistent. Consistent, yeah. Yeah, yeah thanks for that. So <laughs> now I take this and I put it in. So uh, that one will be. Almost what, what grind do you generally use? Uh, what consistency of the grind is this? It's between uh, French press and filter. Okay. okay. Yeah. So as that starts to heat up, what's the science about how it moves uh, up? The bubbles actually, when, when uh, they reach a certain temperature, then it creates an overpressure. So that overpressure is actually caught by the bubbles. Mm -hmm. The bubbles have to escape somewhere. So, so we go with the highest. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, no need for the side of the vacuum pot. So yeah. Uses a suction to bring it Yeah, you can see now there's a, a turbulence in the water. Mm -hmm. So now I put in the coin. And then I stir eight times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I turn down the heat. And then I leave it for 32 seconds. Hmm. And we, as we saw from the beginning, there was a turbulence. Mm -hmm. that, what we call it a particulation between okay. water and coffee. And at the same time, it has a temperature on, uh, which is 84 degrees when you brew it. So after 32 seconds, I stir at the top of the cake, uh -huh. only with the foam, to, to uh, agitate the foam. Yeah, yeah. Right. What, what would you call it? Agitate. Thank you. 
You should be on this side. <laughs> How do you say that in Danish? In Danish, it will, uh, I will say that. Straight the, the, the phone. Okay. Skummet. Skummet? Skummet, yeah. Hmm. If you see now, you put it in. So you put it in as it starts to rise? Yeah. And this one is also ready. Yeah, this this one really bright. So you can you can really see now there's turbulence here. Yeah. Yeah. That turbulence is important because normally when you brew with the filter, you have the water and then it put the water passes down in the lower right. the bowl. So it there's no contact time with the water okay. and the coffee mm -hmm. when it's finished going in the lower bowl. Right. Just, yeah. And then this one now is just starting to come up. Yeah. But this one will have a stronger taste because. Well, I will leave that. Okay. For you to decide. Yeah. And then we'll do a, afterwards, we'll do a blind test. Yeah. Uh, because, you know, you can always, ah, oh, yeah, it was sorry and said, yeah. <laughs> this. Yeah. But let's, let's taste it instead. So now, one, two, three, four, five, six. And you can also, I'll do this eight times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So what you can do is you can try and do instead of eight turns, you can do nine, ten, mm -hmm. and see how much that gives to the coffee. Yeah. But we're talking about a liquid and a dry substance, which we move around. So of course, the more you move around, the more you extract in the coffee. Right. Okay. So you also have to be careful not to extract too much in the coffee. Mm -hmm. So what actually here when you when you finish, you can see the filter how it looks in the filter. Oh yeah. And it looks wow. actually very different on yeah. the on the brew. Yeah. This one's more of a cake. Okay, this okay. is a got more of a peak to it. They are not. Yeah. <laughs> you have to put some things. Yeah. Uh, Only the we, important words. We spend a lot of time in after school where you know, Danish teenagers teach us the important words. Like, yeah. Like what's your favorite word you've learned? Uh Mulvabishum. <laughs> Molehill. <laughs> Which there are many of them in Denmark. Yeah, the you guys have a whole problem. Yeah. <laughs> Look at that. Yeah, yeah. Three very different yeah. finishes. Look at that also. You have you can see on the so actually there was the same amount of water in each. So you can see that oh, but now the fraction gives uh, another is. volume of right. coffee. Right. right. Yeah. This is a little bit more dark on the, on the coffee side. Yeah. yeah. And this is a little bit more uh, light. Right, because it's just extracting more of the coffee. Or... Again, we taste that, but what is important is that if you want to make the same brew, we actually, the science is in the filter. So you actually look at the filter if you have achieved the same okay. uh, extraction. Right. right. Because you have dry particles and you have water as a substance. Yeah. So it's really important to learn from the, the filter if you have done the right thing. Okay. Yeah. Wow. So just take it off like that. And you get nice little stations for your yes. <laughs> <laughs> Just cool. Guys, I'm gonna do blind test. Right. Uh, okay. So here we go. What I'll do, I'll make a round, and I have to ask you to turn around. Yeah, we can, <laughs> we can look inside. Yeah. We can look inside. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We're blind testing with song. Wow. <laughs> Guys, I see. I'm nervous. I'll swap them to. Yeah, this is cracking. I will swap them around. Okay. Just make sure you remember, you remember which one yeah. is Yeah. Okay, I'm ready. Okay. All right. So what I like you to do first is to smell the coffee. Okay. That's the most important part because all the flavors and aromas, they sit in the nasal part. Right. So when we taste, we always taste with our nose. Mm -hmm. So what we do first, we smell okay. and afterwards we taste. But now the coffee is a little bit too hot, so I always prefer to wait one minute yeah. to be through. The coffee is also a little bit more hot, but when it yeah. comes down, it's really, really nice. Yeah. yeah. Would you say with siphon, does it does it does the taste change as it cools with other like with other methods? Yeah, it does. Uh, it gets more fruity mm -hmm. when it cools down. Uh, but the advantages with the siphon is also that you get what we call a tactical balance between sweetness and acidity. Okay. And that's what the siphon does. It gives you a mild coffee where you can actually taste all the, the flavors of okay. the, the, 
the fruity flavors, they, yeah. they, they get a little bit more sweeter, so mm -hmm. yeah, they're more distinct in the cup. Awesome. So we could wait. What's your, what do you, what do you like to drink this at? Like, what do you wait for the temperature to hit? 55. 55. And, and 55 and 60. Yeah. Okay. So then uh, you see this a bit too hot. Yeah. We need wow. to get one of those. Yeah, that's <laughs> nice. And they're, they're not that expensive. Yeah, no, that's, that's a great. fantastic tool to have. If you're wondering what that was, he's literally taking the temperature with a laser of the, of the current water yeah. temperature there. This wouldn't be ideal if you had cold. Yeah. <laughs> But you can have a sense of now, there's one of the coffees which are actually more bodied. Okay, yeah. And there's one which is more sweet and one is which is more mild. Okay. Do you, do you have an idea? Uh, I think there? so. Do you have an idea? Yeah, take oh, a guess. Yeah. Does yeah. it smell? Yeah. Okay. It smells like they're in this order to where they're lined up. <laughs> it's kind of hard to it's kind of hard to to identify, but I, I feel like this one's a little sweeter yeah. than this one right here. Yeah, and this one might be a little a little bit more mold. Yeah, to me, that's why that's why I kind of smell. <laughs> you have a very good cobbles. <laughs> <laughs> definitely change your business. <laughs> <laughs> they are in the same row as this. Really? Yeah. They are. Interesting. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Wow. wow, I'm amazed with myself. Yeah. That's good. There you go. Do you want to taste as well? Yeah. yeah. Come on. Yeah. So what you do is that uh, you have to just take this off. Yeah. Just a little bit. <laughs> Not that much. <laughs> like that. So what you have to do is you have to suck it in as much as you can. Yeah. So you spray it in your nose. Mm. To actually say like that. Yeah. So you have to get all the way back, back yeah. and then you turn it around and then you spit it out. You can also bring it in. Just take a little bit on. That was good uh, suck. <laughs> yeah. They are they are unique in their flavors right there. Yeah, that's amazing, huh? Man, you got that slurping sound down. You have to like it if like you really yeah. really get the yeah. Yeah, I think like, yeah, so I think. This one definitely tastes more watered down. Yeah. And you know what? That's the most favorite method using. Is, um, yeah, that's the one we see most commonly done, yeah. pouring the beans yeah. in at the very end. Yeah. That's how I like to do it. Yeah. Mm. yeah. I like the sweetness of the middle. This one? Yeah. That's also very nice. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that is. It's got a lot of sweetness to it. Yeah. I think this one tastes a bit more fruity. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Yeah. More of a fruity flavor. Yeah, I normally don't, or I normally tend to go for the brighter coffees, but yeah. like when you made us one earlier and it was really full body, but I can still yeah. taste the acidity yeah. and, the, and the sweetness in it. Wow. Which I was amazed by. <laughs> so wow. you can actually do a combination of these two if you want to. If you want to have a little bit more sweetness to the cup, you can stir some more times instead of eight okay. times, you maybe stir uh, nine or ten times. And that'll add more sweetness. Exactly, yeah. Okay. So you're not you're extracting more of it. Yeah, exactly. That's good. Wonderful. So wow. It's, so it's important if you want to actually combine some of this method. For me, there's no right or wrong. It's just what do you like to do. Yeah. So, and some people they like that, and some people they like this. So it's just to find out, find out how to get there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So it's it's okay to explore, to try a different grind, to try a different yeah, yeah. number of swirls. Yeah. 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 yeah, I think that's the fun part is figuring out the different variables. And yeah. yeah, that's that's fantastic. Yeah. I love getting to learn this this method a little different than yeah. you've ever seen it. Yeah. Yeah. And if if you're watching at home, like someone said, just just get in, try different things, try some different 
grinds, try some different temperatures, different temperatures, different elements. Yeah. And then and every coffee start tasting too. Yeah. yeah. We yeah. were using a Costa Rica, you said. Costa Rica. Costa Rica. Yeah. Yeah. From the uh, Awesome. Yeah. Cool. Wow. Well, thank you for showing us this. Is there, is there anything in your shop we should see before we... Yeah, you have to see, see the roaster. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's, let's, go, let's go for a walk. Let's yeah. see your roaster. Yeah. In Denmark, you would say, time for coffee, which is, <laughs> thanks for coffee. Yeah. <laughs> time for Excellent. All right, so we are in your, your roasting room now. Yeah. Yeah, this is the heart of uh, the coffee. Uh, yeah. This is where the is, great coffee comes from. Yeah, oh. that's, that's where it goes down here, oh. <laughs> and it, something is happening in here, and then something is coming out here, and that's coffee. <laughs> that's for, yeah. forged in the fire. Yeah. Wow. Uh, cast iron, uh, wow. gas, and manually roasting. Manually yeah. roasting, okay. Piece of the coffee. It's the only way to do it. Yeah. How much size is this? That's a 15 kilo roaster. 15 kilo. Built in the, in the, the Netherlands. Wow. By some German guys. How do you say this brand name? Gießen. 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 Yeah. It's a Gießen roaster. It's, uh, it's like a, you know, like a barbecue oven. Yeah. <laughs> Just, uh, yeah. Hmm. But it's, it's so stable. I roasted on so many different kinds of roasters. And this, for me, is uh, one of the best roasters to, to roast on. Uh, and you, you can see it's, it's a, just to give you an example, uh, yeah. you get this are the green beans. So what happens is that we get uh, so many samples from different uh, producers, mm -hmm. and you can see if I have to roast this in the big drum, that's not going to happen. Yeah. So I actually have a smaller roaster there. Oh, okay. Uh, which for roasting is, samples. For roasting samples. So you actually roast them in a, in a certain way, just to find out how the flavor should be, yeah. or if, if there's any potential in this coffee. Yeah. And so you don't ruin a whole batch yeah, <laughs> at one yeah, time. Yeah. Uh, so that's that's really funny uh, doing that. And so when you cup the coffee, you find out what is the potential of that coffee, mm -hmm. what yeah. you can you use it for. Yeah. yeah. Now, when you started roasting, what did you start on? A lot of guys start on even a popcorn popper. But did you or on the other? Or on the other? Did you start out <laughs> intending? You said you started out wanting to, to. This wasn't just a hobby when you started roasting. You were going for a product. So yeah, yeah. did you get a roaster right off the bat and start roasting? Yeah. Did you I, figure out how to roast. Yeah, I actually went to a guy in Sweden who helped me uh, to to uh, understand the roasting process. Okay. But as I have a, a pastry chef education, I know something about that. There are three elements in roasting. That's heat, time, and uh, Color. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you, I knew when I was a pastry chef, if I walked out to take the bread out of the oven, I knew, ah, now the, the clock is ringing. Yeah. And you could also see by the color, ah, now the bread is finished, and then you can right. do certain things. Right. Yeah. So here you, you actually you take each sample out every minute mm. to find out how how degree in the roast you are in. Yeah. But the most important for me was when I started to roast to have the facility to roast so many different samples and to learn that each coffee is different. Yeah. From each country, right. yeah. blah, blah, blah. Yeah. You can't so, just roast all of them the same way. No. Yeah. So it, I, I remember that for three months, I was standing in a 100 gram roaster, taking out each sample, <laughs> writing things down, wow. you know, and you do this, you do this, and it was like crazy. a mad scientist. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It was really crazy. If you had one piece of advice for someone just beginning to roast at home, what would that, what would that be? Don't stop. <laughs> Don't stop. <laughs> <laughs> See how much it costs you? Yeah. That's it. No. Uh, for me, in 2008, when I became number six in the world, standing there as a barista and thought that I was one of the best in the world, yeah. because I was in one of the best in the world at that time. But for me, starting to roast my own coffee, that's when I started to understand coffee. Yeah, right. Because I knew that each second that I took out a sample, that second will change the whole flavor of the coffee right. Right. when I brewed it. So just to understand that process, it was such an amazing thing for me. Yeah. I mean, roasting, brewing, these two <laughs> elements, they go together. Yeah. You, you can't, I mean, if you really want to understand how to, that's how to no, do it. Both. Take out the yeah. middle man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and it's so amazing because last year I was, uh, you can see this, this is, uh, I always think that I was, uh, that's so funny because I keep that I was uh, selected to roast the coffees ah. for the World Cupping Championship. Wow, okay. So I roasted 20 different kind of coffees. Oh my gosh. And they all, I only got 5 kilo of 
of each yeah. of each. And I had to hit them perfectly. Yeah. Wow. First time. And they were all of them really nice. None of them complained. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's good. That's, that's a good. good. That's but, a good sign. Yeah. But that was for me. That was uh, going from being a barista, suddenly being a roaster. Yeah. I mean, where I discovered that in 2008 I was standing on the stage, being number six in the world, mm -hmm. and thought I was a very good barista. But now, for me, I really understand what is cover all about. Yeah. Yeah. So. Just get on roasting. Get on roasting. Yeah. Keep learning. Keep digging in. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's really well, well, if you happen to find a giant cast iron roaster somewhere, yeah, yeah. pick it up. Yeah, but e even to do it, you know, like in the oven, just to use your common sense. Always, when you make coffee, never, never, never lose your common sense. Mm. Because if you take a coffee which smells bitter, then putting on water. Just going to make it more bitter. More bitter, you're yeah. just going to extract that smell. Exactly, yeah. 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 And there's a lot of people who, oh, why does it taste like that? It's because the coffee smells like that. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's, uh, so what you start with greatly impacts what you end with. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you can then, you can multiply it by eight or twelve hundred times. <laughs> with <laughs> what the chemical reaction wow. is, is all about. Crazy. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to teach us how to use a siphon, to teach us uh, just a little bit even about the roasting. We are really honored to have spent this, this time with you. Uh, guys, where, where do they find you online? Your website? Greatcoffee.dk Dot .dk for yeah. Danish Kingdom. Yeah. Not dot .com. Dot Greatcoffee.dk. We are, we've loved our time. Thank you so much, Soren. And my pleasure to meet some guys like you. <laughs> really enjoyed Thank you, it. Thanks, for It's been a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, feel free to subscribe on the podcast. You can find this on the New Divides Facebook, and we will probably send you a link so you can post it if you like. But uh, thanks for coming to Coffee with the New Divide at Great Coffee with Soren. Stila. Stila. Markusen. Markusen. <laughs> Soren Stila Markusen. Have a good day.